Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Laura, and tonight, I will be your guide as we travel back to the foggy moors of England, and listen to the retelling of Persuasion, Jane Austen's finest novel. We follow the years-long love story of Captain Frederick Wentworth and Anne Elliot as they gradually learn to go against the expectations of others and follow their hearts to be united with their one true love. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now. Allow yourself to get comfortable on your mattress. Right here and now, nothing is expected of you. All you have to do is simply close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice as we enjoy this relaxing story together. Feel the tension melt out of your body with that relaxation. There is absolutely nothing that you need to be doing right now. Your body knows what you need, and it will guide you to the night of restful sleep that you deserve. Feel your torso and arms sink into the mattress a little bit deeper with every breath you take. Next, feel your hips, legs, and feet sink down, down, down into the bed. Growing more comfortable and relaxed with every inhale and exhale. Inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Now that we have taken a few moments to find comfort in the space that we are in, here and now, let us begin. Spring was always welcome at Kellynch Hall. After a long, grey winter, those first few beams of spring sun cascading down onto the land felt like the sweetest blessing the earth could bestow on the estate. Her entire life, Anne Elliot has looked forward to spring on the estate. It was something she found herself dreaming of on particularly long, bleak winter nights. Even during summer, she found her mind drifting back, 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 back to the early days of spring, only months ago, when the landscape would shrug off winter and embrace the transitional beauty that could only be found in spring. She loved the promise of spring, the bite in the air that reminded everyone that good things were coming, and wonderful change was just over the horizon. Just one more sunny day away, just one more minor rainstorm from actually happening. And on the first day of spring, when Anne was twenty, The wave of hope and promise grew even stronger. Before she even opened her eyes, she could smell the freshness in the air. She swore she could smell the daffodils starting to peek up through the soil. She swore she could smell the blooms on trees as bird after bird landed on the branches, shaking them awake. When she opened her eyes, the view beyond her window was a welcome sight. 
her stark white linen curtains billowed in the light breeze that danced and swayed across the landscape, weaving into her room to remind her that spring has finally arrived. Only after she opened her eyes did she realise she had fallen asleep with a book entwined in her grasp. She opened it, hoping to have saved the page that she was on. The smell of the old book filled her with a feeling of nostalgia and comfort. Though she knew she had things to attend to, she supposed it wouldn't hurt to lie in bed for just a few more moments and read the book. She was a vivacious reader, the most intelligent child in her family. She was known for sneaking off to the study and library and curling up by the fire with books covering every topic under the sun. She didn't have a preference. She simply loved to learn. Her sisters, Elizabeth and Mary, would sometimes toss light taunts Anne's way. And on that first day of spring, Anne read to her heart's content before anyone else was even awake. As she took in the words and the beautiful poetry found in the ink of the page, she listened to the birds chirping just outside her window. She gazed out on occasion to see a stray robin land on the ground and hop across the grass in search of breakfast one of the most welcome signs of spring. She loved closing her eyes and simply taking in the soundscape around her, the sound of her curtains billowing, the sound of the breeze lacing its way through the grass, the sound of her pages flipping, 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 flipping as she sank deeper and deeper into the world nestled in the palms of her hands. The sound of the river on the remote side of the impressive family estate as it meandered its way through the countryside, its banks overflowing with the melting snow from distant mountain tops. After reading a few chapters, Anne decided it was finally time to head out into the world and embrace the start of the day. She put on a simple blue dress and travelled down to the courtyard of the estate where her sisters were having tea and discussing their plans for the day. While her sisters intended on visiting some friends, Anne had something else in mind. She decided she'd go for a walk on this lovely spring day and pick up a book from the local bookstore, a treat to start the new season with. Anne began her journey to the bookshop, making her way through the stunning landscape around the estate. She travelled alongside the winding river, watching as the rocks glistened just beneath the surface and frogs happily croaked along the shoreline. She meandered through a forest of lofty cedar trees. Overhead, the sun flickered through the trees, casting brilliant shapes on the green forest floor. She took deep breaths of the fresh air, feeling invigorated by the scent of the pine needles and loam. Finally, she reached the bookshop. The storekeeper greeted her with a smile. She tended to visit this time of day, whenever she came, and usually she was the only person in the store. However, today, that wasn't quite the case. A man in a navy uniform stood in front of one of the many shelves, looking over the books intently. 
man tried to meet his gaze with a smile, but he seemed far too preoccupied. Instead, she got to work scrolling through the available books on the shelf. To her surprise, she had spotted a book she'd heard whispers of in the society circles. A book she had long hoped to read. She reached for it at the exact same moment when the navy man reached for it. She gazed up at him, apologising, only for the man to smile down at her, his blue eyes glistening in what little light was making its way through the open bookstore window. He told Anne that the apology was all his. Clearly, Anne had set her sights on the book long before he did. There was silence for a moment, as the two truly looked at one another. Anne felt a thrumming in her chest that she had never quite felt before. The man before her was tall and handsome, with sharp features, but an incredibly kind expression and soft mannerisms. There seemed to be a permanent smile etched into the corners of his lips. But she wasn't the only one with a pounding heart. Captain Frederick Wentworth, the Navy man standing beside her, felt like he couldn't breathe for a moment when he looked at Anne. She had fine brown hair that trailed down over her shoulders and expressive amber eyes that seemed to warm him from the inside out. Being next to her made him feel as though he belonged, and he rarely felt that way anywhere. After a moment of silence, a moment they both needed to regain their breath, Captain Frederick Wentworth introduced himself. He was a few years older than Anne, and he wasn't actually from the same town as her. He had returned from being out to sea to visit a cousin and would be staying here for a few weeks on break. Anne was delighted to hear this. She had never heard of him before, but Wentworth had certainly heard of her. Her father was known for his wealth, a baron with a love of extravagance and spending. He knew that the Baron had three daughters, but he didn't know he had one as charming as Anne. Wentworth took the book gently from Anne's hands, offering to buy it for her. Anne protested, but Wentworth insisted with a kind smile. He brought the book and handed it back to Anne, now offering to escort her back to her estate to ensure she made it safely. Anne readily agreed to that. The two began the long, winding journey back to the estate. The whole time, their conversation flowed naturally. They spoke of their favourite books, their hobbies, and things they loved about the world. Anne was relieved to talk to someone who, for once didn't want to just gossip and talk about aristocracy. It felt like the first genuine conversation she had had in quite some time. No discussion of social standing, or the latest drama between the wealthy families. No discussion about the things she couldn't care less about. They had only been speaking for a few minutes, but Anne already felt as though she could be herself, with Wentworth, and Wentworth, in turn, felt a special kinship to Anne. They hardly looked at the path as they walked to the estate. On occasion, Anne would pause to look down at the river, or lean forward to look at a newly flowering daisy. It felt fitting to be stoking the embers of a new relationship, as the world was beginning to bloom around her. Anne and Wentworth both came to realise how slow they were walking 
when a person zipped around them, gumbling under his breath about lovebirds as he passed by. The two couldn't help but laugh at the realisation, though Anne felt her cheeks flushing with colour. Truthfully, she was in no hurry. This connection she felt, how free she felt with Wentworth by her side. It wasn't something she wanted to give up any time soon. And it seemed that the universe favoured her that day, because by the time they were about halfway home, dark clouds swept across the sky. It seemed to happen in a flash. However, they may have been too enraptured with each other to notice the many signs nature had been giving them. A downpour unleashed from overhead, the spring rain cascaded down over them. Anne erupted into a fit of giggles as she searched for shelter. Wentworth placed his hand on the small of her back and urged her to move underneath a large oak tree at the edge of the forest. Anne plopped herself down at its base, hardly able to breathe from laughing so hard. Wentworth tumbled down beside her, clumsily trying to take off his overcoat. He wrapped his overcoat around Anne's drenched shoulders to warm her. As he did, Anne's heart skipped a beat. His hand brushed against the side of her neck, and as his jacket settled around her, she could smell him on it. It was a scent unlike any other. The scent of the sea, briny and invigorating, mixed with the scent of libraries, tucked into the corners of harbour cities, and the warm earl grey tea that he sipped every morning. Anne blinked a little slower, as she breathed it in, finding instant comfort in it. The two sat under the tree in silence for a bit, taking in the views of the rain-soaked forest all around them. They watched raindrops fall down, 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 until they landed on flower petals and rolled off into the grass below, They watched as the birds stopped flying, instead opting to cosy up in the branches overhead with one another, for warmth and comfort. It was serene to see the forest slow down with the rain, and, at the same time, Anne and Wentworth both felt as though the universe had slowed specifically for both of them. The sky had opened up so they could share this moment together, so they could go from being strangers to being something else entirely. Wentworth commented that it appeared as though they would be here for quite some time. The rain didn't seem to be too keen on stopping any time soon, and he could not ask a lady to drag herself through the rain with him. Anne smiled at Wentworth as she plucked the book out and held it up to him. Thankfully, we have some entertainment, she chimed, flashing him a vibrant smile. Wentworth took the book, drying his hands as much as possible, and began to read aloud to Anne. It was something Anne had never experienced before, being read to in such a manner and it made her heart flutter. She leaned against the bark and listened to Wentworth read until they were several chapters into the book. She watched him as he read, savouring the expressions he made. He wasn't just narrating to her. He was experiencing the book, loving the book just as much as she did. It was something they were sharing together for the very first time, and neither of them could have loved the experience any more. Soon, 
the sky began to clear as quickly as it darkened, as it often does during spring. They reached the end of a chapter as the last drop of rain fell from above. Wentworth closed the book, a bit sadly, and handed it back to Anne with a warm smile. He supposed it was time to escort her the rest of the way home. The last half of the walk was even better than the first. They were more comfortable now. Their experience under that ancient oak tree had turned them from strangers to true friends, and perhaps much more. When they reached the estate, Wentworth tried not to look surprised or intimidated by its grandeur. As they hovered by the entrance, it was clear that neither of them wanted to say goodbye. Anne suggested that they meet again tomorrow to continue reading from the book. After all, they had both been swept up by the story. It would just be cruel for Anne to keep it to herself now. Wentworth agreed, relieved that Anne wanted to see him again. And indeed, they did continue to see each other, nearly every day over the next few weeks. Wentworth would come to the estate in the early morning to see Anne and read alongside her. Sometimes when they were able to sneak away from the prying eyes of her family, they would settle under that large oak tree where they had read together for the very first time. But most days, they sat in the garden on the family estate, reading and enjoying one another's company as Anne's family looked on with disapproval. None of them had seen Anne this happy before, but they deeply wished it was with a different man. Wentworth was in the Navy, nothing more. He didn't have an estate, property, or large belongings to his name. How could he compare to a family like theirs? What on earth could he offer Anne other than to be her reading partner? Anne heard the whispers on occasion, but mostly, her family hoped it was just a fling, a silly crush, and that nothing would come of it. She would read with him, and he would head back to be a part of the Navy. In no time, he'd be sailing to distant shores, and Anne would be engaged to a gentleman even wealthier than he was. But that's not exactly what happened. Those long hours in the garden and under the oak tree strengthened the bond between Anne and Wentworth. She found herself dreaming of him nearly every night. She found herself caressing the book that they read together, counting down the remaining pages to ensure that they still had time together. And, at his cousin's house, Wentworth was doing the same thing. He swore he could hear Anne's laugh, even when she wasn't there. He longed all hours of the day to see her smile, to hear her thoughts and opinions on the book they were sharing. His lovesickness even caught the attention of his cousin, a man not known for his observational skills. It was a few weeks before they reached the end of the book. Wentworth approached her family's estate that day, with a request burning in his mind, and a ring burning a hole in his pocket. He knew that the last pages of the book could not be the last few moments of their relationship. So, they sat in the garden and read. As he reached the last page, he read it slowly and intentionally, savouring every single word savouring the feeling of Anne's hand against his arm as he read aloud. And then, the book was finished. He closed the book and set it down on his lap, and for a moment they were both silent, gazing down at the book, and then gazing up at each other. 
Anne. I don't want this to be the end of our story, Wentworth whispered to her. He reached into his pocket, pulling out the ring that he had managed to afford. He told Anne that the days spent with her were some of the best of his life, and he'd like to spend his lifetime making more memories with her. So, Anne Elliot, will you be my bride? he asked. Anne was so delighted she could hardly get a word out. She threw her arms around Wentworth, embracing him as her body racked with laughter of pure joy and bliss. Yes, yes, I'll marry you, she cried into his neck, wrapping her arms even tighter around him. They embraced there in the garden for quite some time. Wentworth raced home to make preparations, while Anne ran inside to tell her family the news. Her family didn't react much at first, only congratulating Anne with a bit of numbness. It wasn't until later that Anne would realise the seriousness of her news. Lady Russell, Anne's godmother, sat on the end of Anne's bed that night. She was a woman of wisdom, a dear confidant of Anne, who she trusted with everything. And that night, Lady Russell told Anne that she should reconsider marrying Wentworth. Wentworth was not a man of her status. He could not provide her with the life she was accustomed to in any way. He may be a nice man, a kind man, a passionate man, but he was not one who could give Anne the life she deserved. He was a man in the Navy, not a baron. On top of that, Lady Russell argued that Anne was much too young to be a bride. Anne felt her heart sink. Lady Russell's words were too persuading, her reasoning too solid. Anne agreed to end her engagement to Wentworth. The next morning, she met Wentworth under the oak tree. She told him that she could not be wed to him, steadfast in her decision, thanks to Lady Russell's guidance. She could see the hurt in Wentworth's eyes, but he merely nodded and wished her well before he disappeared over the hill. For quite some time, Anne did not encounter Wentworth, though every night she dreamt of him. Almost immediately after turning down the proposal, Anne found herself deeply regretting the decision. And life did not get easier for Anne. Out of funds, her father was forced to move the family to Bath and rent out the family estate. He rented the home to the Crofts, and only after they were settled in did Anne realise that Mrs Croft, the matriarch of the Croft family, was Wentworth's sister. Not only that, but Anne's sister, Mary, got married, and her new husband was a dear friend of Wentworth. And then, over the next few months, at several gatherings, Anne encountered Wentworth. Captain Wentworth, now wealthy and famous for his service in the war, crossed paths with Anne again. At dinners and parties, she would find him flirting with the Musgrove girls, often a woman named Louisa. Anne tried to bury her regrets and her feelings, but inside she could feel the loss of Wentworth deeper than ever. At every encounter, Anne found herself meeting Wentworth's eyes. They were still the kind, expressive eyes she had seen all those years ago. The eyes that snuck glances at her between chapters of the book. It deeply saddened her that Wentworth's gaze was now often on Louisa, and she felt utterly alone. But she wasn't the only one dealing with jealousy. Soon, Anne was introduced to Mr Elliot, 
a man deeply interested in courting her. Though Anne wasn't entirely keen on the man, not trusting his opaque demeanour, she attended many gatherings by his side, and he walked her home nearly any time she left the house. Wentworth found himself increasingly jealous, and that jealousy only rose when Louisa broke off her courtship with him to marry another captain instead. Though that heartbreak could not compare to the heartbreak he had suffered many years earlier. The heartbreak of losing Anne. Though seven years had passed, the two still thought of each other every single day. The regrets hung heavy over both of their heads. And the desire to be with one another, once more, seemed to burn more brightly as the years passed. It was a love that refused to dim, though they could never let the other know it. That is, until the concert. Anne attended a concert with Mr Elliot by her side. During the intermission, she tried desperately to lock eyes with Wentworth, to draw his attention to her, but his jealousy kept his gaze firmly locked on the ground. Anne realised that he has not yet forgiven her for letting herself be persuaded to end their engagement years ago. The next day, disappointed about being snubbed by the man she once held so dear, Anne visited Mrs Smith, a friend of the family, Concerned, Mrs. Smith informed Anne that her wariness of Mr. Elliot was for good reason. Mr. Elliot was not a man of integrity, nor of kindness. Oddly, Anne was relieved by this. Politely snubbing Mr. Elliot during their next encounter came with ease. Though, it made the next few times she saw Wentworth even more challenging. She wanted to meet his gaze, to apologise, to fall into his arms, but it wasn't that simple. Every once in a while, they would smile at one another, unaware that both of their hearts were fluttering at this, unaware that they wanted each other desperately. After one shared smile, Anne retired to a study with Captain Harville, a friend of Wentworth's. Wentworth couldn't help but listen into the conversation through the cracked mahogany doors. It was a conversation about men and women, but most importantly, a conversation about constancy in love. As Wentworth listened, he clung to every single word. He knew he couldn't let Anne go again. He couldn't lose her. That night, by the fire, he drafted a letter confessing his love for Anne. He spoke of their long days under the oak tree, of how much he missed her laugh and smile, of how long he had been dreaming of having her by his side. He spilled his heart onto the page in ink, and then... He left the letter for Anne to find. As Anne read the letter, tears spilled over her cheeks. It felt as though it wasn't real. This confession of love. A confession she long feared she would never receive again. Was the greatest gift that God had ever given her. She found Wentworth the next day. The two slowly walked back to Anne's and spoke of their past without any filters and without any fear. Wentworth told Anne that those few weeks with her had been the happiest of his life. And Anne, too, confessed the same. Ending her engagement to him was the biggest mistake of her life. Wentworth wrapped his hands around hers, begging her not to see it as a regret, 
because now they could be together. They could grow together further, never leaving the other's side. If only Anne would take him as her husband this time. Anne nodded, tears in her eyes. I would love to be your wife, she whispered against his neck. All the years of hardship, of jealousy, of guilt, they all melted away in that instant as they embraced each other, knowing that their future was going to be spent together. The pain of their past ceased to exist. They were blissfully happy, ready for whatever the future had in store for them. When Anne returned home, Wentworth joined her. Anne told her family of the proposal, of her desire to marry Wentworth. And once more, they didn't look pleased. They offered her unenthusiastic approval, but that was all Anne needed. A few days later, Anne sat in a room preparing for her wedding. She felt as though her whole life had led up to this moment the moment she would finally be able to be with the true love of her life. In the next room over, Wentworth felt the exact same way. All those nights, dreaming of having Anne by his side, had led to this. He would no longer have to dream of holding her, of loving her. Because now, he would finally be able to They stood before God and their families as they said their vows, gazing deeply into one another's eyes. There was a connection and joy there that could only be forged with hardship and time, a connection they knew they would share for the rest of their lives. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story. And it has brought you a night of restful, relaxing sleep. Please join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.